In my most recent interview with Justin Gonzalez, the internet was a little bit slow between us, so I just want to give you guys a fair warning before watching the video. Enjoy. I'm Connor Northrup, I'm joined by Justin Gonzalez, who competes for the vacant LFA featherweight scrap against Jake Childers at LFA 84, July 10th. What's up, Justin? How you guys doing out there, man? Thanks for having <laughs> me on, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, happy to have you on. And I mean, now too, like we were kind of just talking before we started like recording, but uh, with everything that is going on too, to have LFA back and, you know, they're setting up shop in South Dakota. I mean, just how grateful are you to kind of just get back into competition, especially, you know, fight for the belt? Man, I am so pumped. It's just like I was telling you earlier, man, it's my lack working, training, just, uh, it means we're on the right track, you know, professional sports are starting to come back. So, uh, maybe we're not completely back to normal life, but, um, we're on the right track and we're getting there. You know, it's going to take some time obviously, but it's just good to know that at least we're making our progress. So. Yeah. <laughs> About when did you find out too, that they were going to, you know, start putting on shows again? Um, this I actually took this fight a little bit shorter notice than I would have normally liked, but uh, it's probably about five weeks, six weeks ago maybe. They kind of there was talks, um, talked about just my managers kind of hit me up and they just said, "Hey man, be ready, you know, nothing things, but um, they're probably gonna start having shows sooner rather than later, you know." can't give you all the details because they know that as soon as they can they will so we want to be ready and be able to jump up on that opportunity you know kind of just something that i live by is like if you're always ready you never have to be ready so just stay ready man 80 percent ready 100 percent of the time you know yeah like what was like your training like like during this time too i mean like were, were you kind of like training for a fight you know were you able to get to the gym like before you actually knew you had this opportunity um, yeah, a, li a li little bit, you know, my life, it, it, it's down, so down. Um, I have a lot of partners that we're really good friends with, so, um, I was still kind of training, whether it was just playing around one-on-one, -on -one, their garage, my garage, um, I was still, uh, I got some weights at the house, so I was still moving. I mean, you can go on a run on your own. You don't need really anything mm -hmm. besides some shoes to go on a run. Um, and my work is technically considered essential, so I was kept working. I have some roommates, so I was still seeing people. Uh, my life didn't change that much. I was still somewhat training, still working, still staying busy, active, as much as possible. Like, yeah. I was fight ready because obviously certain things you couldn't do. Um, I was definitely staying busy the whole time. Yeah. So. And how, how do you just feel overall about, like, fighting in an empty arena? You know, it, it, it's going to be a lot different. It's, it's going to be you feel the presence of the fan, feel their energy, and you kind of feed off of that. So... Obviously, have a lot of loyal people out. They would have made the travel. They would have made the trip out to South Dakota. But mm -hmm. due to what's going on in the world, unfortunately, they can't. But um, they're still sending me their love. They're still sending me all the uh, positive vibes they can. So it's going to be different. But I think with my last fight being on Contender, I think I'm kind of prepared for it a little bit better than most. Um, I want to say in the Contender fight, the building baby had, 30, 40 people total in the entire building. And that's mm -hmm. like workers, fighters, corners. I mean, judges, that's everybody, man, total. So, and it was kind of quiet, uh, really cheer like you normally would at a. I think most people would be because I've had that experience. I mean, and also do 
fighting, man, you're not really paying attention to a lot of other stuff. You're kind of tunnel vision. You're in there like, hey, man, me and this guy, we're about to get it, man. I'm trying to put the drought out, so I ain't focused on others. Me and him, one of us is going down, so <laughs> I kind of uh, zoned in on him, you know? Yeah. And just like, you know, you brought the Contender Series, too. Like, what was that experience like for you? Like, what did you take away from that? Uh, it, it was awesome, man. It was fun. It was uh, it was just cool to just see all the things that they're just, as you would expect, you know, from kind of the UFC personnel, Zufa, um, on the Contender Series, man. Just so many people handling their business, getting everything taken care of for you, scheduling. Uh, I mean, from transportation to... Um, meals to like your schedule to I mean anything you could think of medicals it, it just they have somebody on top of it and they're helping you kind of guiding you getting it all set up for you so um, it was nice man it was really easy it was really fluid just going with the flow and as long as you just took care of your stuff they kind of handled it all for you almost you know it was uh, really easy it made my life a lot easier you know sometimes you go to these motions where it's not that fluid and issues and just miscommunication and so many issues it's frustrating that was awesome man it was smooth i would recommend it i mean if i could keep that in all my fights i would love it so yeah and, like, from that, too, I mean, uh, after your fight and, uh, you know, once everything went down, were you surprised that you didn't get the, the contract in the end? Uh, man, it was, it was frustrating, you know. I, uh, I hurt my knee, but I didn't know exactly how bad it was hurt. It was kind of uh, just, you know, you're an athlete. You're in a tough game where you're going to get little aches and pains. So it just kind of through training, I wasn't quite sure – but you didn't want to pass up on such a big opportunity. Mm-hmm. So um, going in, into the fight, we just had to kind of train a little bit, um, just be aware of what, he can, of what my body was capable of doing. So we had to fight a little bit different. Normally liked, but at the end of the day, man, I mean, I think I had a 10-8 round, maybe two 10-8 rounds. So I'm just kind of like, man, how can you be disappointed with a performance that dominant, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I, I was a little surprised. I just, like, man, I'm sitting here 10-0, and 0, largely unchallenged. I mean, there's been a couple fights that you can say there, there was some tough fights, but, man, I'm, I'm dominating everybody in front of me. So, and even dominating him, who was, I mean, he was coming off, like, nine KOs in the first round, mm-hmm. and just such a big name so much hype behind it It was and to dominate him like that i felt like yeah dude i i feel like i deserved a contract but you know sometimes dane is looking for something different you know i i get it it's understandable but i mean in my eyes all the champs kind of are wrestlers and i mean they do what they have to do to win and uh you know i didn't take any damage i dominated got in there got in got out got paid got the dub so it is what it is, but uh, yeah, I was surprised that I didn't get the contract. I think I would have really, I think I deserved it. I think I had the most dominant win on the show for sure, mm-hmm. the most one sided for sure. But I don't, I don't know, man. That's a, I guess that's not my job, wasn't to pick who gets contracts. Yeah. My job is to go in there and fight. So, yeah. And then, like, w- with this upcoming fight, too, I mean, you're going from that contender series fight to this. I mean, do you feel like this is kind of setting up perfect for? Almost like maybe like a, like kind of like a second tryout because it's LFA's you know first fight back. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of eyes on this fight too. It's it's for a belt. I mean, do you feel like it's kind of uh, aligning for you? Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say they're pretty similar on those levels. Um, LFA World Title riding on the Contender Series is a big deal. Um, I know they're starting to cast, and they did invite me back. They told me last season like, hey man, we'd love to have you back. Um, maybe we can do some stuff a little bit different, see what we can do about getting you that contract. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, it's hard to say. We got a lot of things in the works. Um, I tried to just take it one fight at a time, hopefully go beat this dude up, knock him out, get in, get out, like I said, get that check, and then on to the next one. But 
whatever it may be, whether it's contender, whether UFC calls me up, whether it's me up. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of options out there, so I can't just limit it to one. And uh, you know, until I talk to these promotions, and until after this fight, I handle business. It's kind of uh, just we'll see what happens, man. It's hard to say, really. But I'm open for whatever my, comes my way. I'm not canceling anything out. I'm not turning anything down right now. Mm-hmm. But for now, my focus is Jake Childers and that LFA world title, you know? So that's kind of uh, my tunnel vision right now. Yeah. And I know originally you were slated to fight, I think it was Jonas uh, Brino on, on April 3rd for the title. Obviously, the pandemic kind of put that on hold, but... Uh, at what point did you realize that, like, you know, when they were coming back, you weren't going to fight Jonas? I mean, was that was that fight still talked after that? Uh, it was it was really weird. So the the whole uh, I guess we'll start from the beginning. <laughs> I was supposed to fight uh, James Garcia, I believe was his name initially. Mm-hmm. Tough fight, man. I was I was super excited for that fight. He brings it. He's tough. Just a wide variety of his skill set. Um, I mean, me being undefeated, both coming off wins off contender. It was a big matchup, you know. It was a very mm-hmm. big – people wanted to see this fight. Two top contenders fighting for what they want. Um, and he actually got called up. He took a fight. I believe he lost. I could be mistaken. And uh, so whenever he got called up, um, I believe Jake Childers was the second option. He was supposed to – he – I. I don't quote me on this. I can't remember because we were supposed to fight, and I think he like verbally committed, accepted, and then he declined later, like a day later. Just personal issues. I couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. Not my problem. Didn't really care. Um, so then, then it was Bill Harin, Bill Arino from uh, Brazil, and man, we were super close to the fight. I think we were about two weeks, maybe ten days out before they canceled, and. Uh, we were in talks with LFA about the whole time, just seeing, like, hey, man, is anything happening? Is mm. it a word? Is it looking good? Is it looking bad? What's going to happen with this? And uh, it ended up getting postponed. So at that point, they just – it was postponed. wasn't canceled. So they are like, we will have this fight. It would just be at a later date. So – with everything going on and just kind of more coming out shortly after we started kind of trying to put two and two together and just with travel bans and just different opponents and what's like a realistic thought here. It was hard to say whether we were going to fight Bill Arino or whether it was going to be one of these other guys mm-hmm. or if it was somebody different, you know? So, um, sorry, not to, not to just ramble, but, uh, it kind of started looking that way that like maybe he wasn't gonna be able to make it. And even if he did, like what was the hardships that were going to come with it? Mm -hmm. it A realistic, even a realistic thought that this fight could still happen with him. Yeah. Um, So it kind of just happened. And then um, once things started getting rolling, they threw me the name Jake Childers. I accepted right away, man. There was no second thoughts. There was no doubts in my mind. I said, let's get it, man. Let's do this. Yeah. And with the Childers fight, too, and, like, Bihariño, too, like, I mean, is there one fight that you kind of favored more? You know, they're uh, really similar, a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. You know, we mm-hmm. broke these guys down. We uh, kind of focused on what we had to focus on. Um, both Southpaws, um, both uh, have good records. I think Billarino was 8-1. and one. I think Childers is 8-0. and oh. And uh, similarities in that structure, but differences in the way that they fight. More stand-up versus uh, wrestling, kind of, versus cage pressure or stuff like that you know um matter me man whoever's in front of me i'm gonna go out there and do my best to put them away and if i I try not to focus too much on what they're doing i try to make it my fight and they're gonna have to fight my fight it's really difficult not to so i didn't care man whoever they put in front of me didn't matter my goals haven't changed. I want to be the best in the world. I want to be the best to ever do it. Doesn't matter, man. Whoever steps across from me in that cage is standing between me and my goals. So, I mean, 
the thoughts the same, man. Take them out any way I have to. Mm-hmm. And how do you see it playing out uh, against Childers? Uh, I see myself beating him up, getting my hand raised. I'm gonna get that stoppage. Um, he's tough, man. Don't give, don't. No joke. I'm not. I respect this guy. He's he's a dangerous opponent. So I gotta respect his abilities and what he's what he's capable of doing. But I'm I. There's levels to this, man. I've I'm I'm a beast, man. I'm fucking coming for it all, man. He's never fought somebody like me. And uh, he's going to realize maybe he should have. Maybe he should have been a little bit more challenged before he took this fight. I'm going to beat him up, and I'm going to get that stoppage. I'm going to get my hand raised, walk out of there with a nice check, and somebody's going to be calling me, calling me up. So <laughs> Yeah. And, like, with, with Childers, too, I mean, like you said, like the first time you guys were scheduled, obviously, like, didn't happen. But, uh, I mean, did you always kind of know in the back of your mind that, you know, this fight would eventually probably happen? I figured at some point, you know, he's, I mean, he's got a good, he's he's undefeated, you know, I'm undefeated. It's kind of the fights we're looking for, man. I'm in the spot where I, I'm not going to get an easy fight and I don't want an easy fight, man. You know, you see a lot of these guys who have padded records and then they finally get called up and then they just get pummeled and it's a rude awakening for them. You know, I want the toughest guys I can fight. I want different challenges so I can push myself in all different aspects of the game, man, and really see what I need to work on, what I need to do to grow. And so whenever I do get to that next level where everybody's a killer, I'm ready, man, and I have the answers for them. You know, it's – it's. I'm not afraid to take the hard road, man. I've done it my whole life. Never, uh, I don't take shortcuts. And this is the way the plan – sometimes the route has to be longer, man. It just has to go sometimes. So I ain't mad about it. At some point, this game's going to come to an end for me. So um, I'd like some good years up in the better, bigger leagues, man, knocking out some of these higher-level names and uh, getting these bigger checks and just letting the world know who I am, you know? Yeah. And just from, like, when you're talking about, like, the bigger leagues, too, I mean, it doesn't really sound like for you like it's, like, UFC or bust. I mean, are you open up to kind of any of the bigger promotions? Yeah, you know, you know, I would love to fight for UFC. I'd love to fight for Bellator. I mean, one, what's up, dude? Let's talk. <laughs> FL, I'd like that million-dollar tournament, man. That sounds really interesting. There's some tough guys in that tournament. It, it, It's not any one promotion or bust, you know? We'll see what, what options open up after this fight, you know? I think there's a lot of people interested. I think I've shown what I'm capable of doing. I think uh, a, lot, a lot of people know who I am. I am whoever let's talk man like no um whoever kind of whoever reaches out man I mean I got some man just pushing for me too you know and um hopefully with a dominant win it is enough to show the world that I'm ready for whatever is next yeah and uh, I have another question, Jeremy. Have you ever, have you had any more time to play more? Uh, I saw you were playing a uh, Blind Connect Four. Have you had any more chances to do that? <laughs> um, my brother comes over. Really close. Um, I was actually just at my boss's house now, uh, just hanging out with her. She's she just we're real tight. Schmidt's Telecom. Let's go. <laughs> um. My brother comes over. We play video games. We go get lunch. He's uh, he comes to the gym, helps me out if I need something. We just break things down, man. It's nice to just talk to him because uh, I I think he knows me better than anybody, man. He sometimes yeah. knows me better than I know myself. I like <laughs> to think he uh, helps keep me level headed. We break down opponents, just thoughts, thoughts on life. Just sometimes you just want to get away from everything and just kind of just talk, man, and just just kind of uh, relax a little bit, let your guard down, and. Uh, He's somebody I can go to no matter what it is. So whether it's playing Blind Connect 4, playing some <laughs> video games, going to get some sushi. We might go get some sushi tonight, actually. There you go. <laughs> um, whatever it may be. So um, it, it was different stuff to be just uh, some brotherly love, you know. Yeah, cool. Uh, what, what's your uh, sushi roll of choice? Oh, man. Uh, just say some different places, they have uh, different names. Um, obviously, I got to keep a little bit healthier. 
So, uh, um, I like a place and they have a uh, volcano roll. I believe it shrimp, cucumber, um, some other. <laughs> and I just say, man, let's do it, man. It's got some spices in there, a little bit spicy. Um, um, it's called the steak and seasonings, just some different ingredients. I don't know, man. I just say, <laughs> load them up and send them my way, bro, because I'll eat them all. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Jess, well, uh, before I let you go, uh, a- anything you want to add? No, uh, thank you guys, man. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch, listen, see what I'm all about. Um, don't forget, tune in, LFA, um, July 10th. It's going to be a so that out. Come watch me win a world title. Um, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, uh, my username is jtrainun. So just come see what my life's about. See me fighting. See me hanging out with my nieces and nephews. See me just going out with the fellas, having a good time, hitting the lake, whatever it may be. Man, you guys got any questions? Feel free. Uh, don't be hesitant. Ask me. Ask the way, man. I'm pretty a book. I like to let people know what's going on. Thank you, brother. Me on.